Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with crispy no-fry potato pancake poppers. That's right, these might only be half as tall as tater tots, but personally, I think they're twice as good. And we are gonna make what is my new favorite potato snack with only a handful of ingredients and no messy stovetop frying. Oh, and yes, if you're Canadian, you are allowed to call these crispy potato pucks, which reminds me, these would be great for poutine. But first things first, and to get started, we'll begin by grating two potatoes into some cold, fresh water. And I'm doing two potatoes because that's going to make 24 of these poppers. So if you want more, grate more, which would be no big thing since grating potatoes is pretty easy. But you know what else is easy? Grating off a fingertip. So please, when you get down to the end, be very careful and take your time. And don't feel like you have to go all the way down to the last shred of potato. Even though I did, and I'll be a little disappointed if you don't as well. But also be careful. And that is what we call in the business a mixed message. And then what we'll do once our potatoes are grated is add the water from the bowl we kept our potatoes in into the main bowl. And we'll kind of swish that around because our next step here is rinsing off most of the starch. And for that, we're going to need even more water than this. So what we'll do is take this bowl to the sink and we will fill it up all the way almost to the top with cold, fresh water. And we'll use our hands to swish it around or if you want, slosh it around. And depending on the size of the bowl, we'll do this once or twice, or maybe three times, or until the water we're pouring off looks pretty clear, which mine does. So that means most of the starch has been rinsed off. And once that's happened, we'll go ahead and transfer this into a strainer and let it drain. And not just drained, well drained. At which point we'll pull it out of the sink and transfer our grated potatoes onto a nice clean kitchen towel. Because before we add this to our mixing bowl, we're gonna to wanna to squeeze out as much excess water as we can. And I'm sorry, but I have to compliment myself since I usually try to do this with a few layers of paper towels. But what happens is about halfway through the squeezing, the thing explodes and I have to give up and end up using a kitchen towel anyway. So this time I decided to save a step. And that's it, once we've squeezed out as much water as we can, we can go ahead and transfer that into a mixing bowl and add the rest of our ingredients, which will include some garlic powder which for these at least works better than fresh, for some reason. We will also of course want some salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. And then we'll shock the world by adding a few shakes of cayenne, plus a little drizzle of olive oil, followed by our last two ingredients, which is some all-purpose flour, and some freshly and finely grated Parmesan cheese. And while the order of the other ingredients doesn't matter, these last two do, since by adding our Parmigiano Reggiano on top of the flour, as we start to mix this with our fingertips, that starch is gonna kinda of coat the little particles of cheese, and we are not gonna to have to worry about any clumping, which can happen if finely grated Parmesan hits wet ingredients. But anyway, we'll go ahead and mix this very thoroughly with our fingertips, using a fairly gentle, thoughtful, and dare I say, loving touch. And we'll continue mixing until we think everything's thoroughly combined, and the mixture begins to feel a little bit damp, at which point we'll stop, because it's done. And our mixture is now ready to transfer into our prepared mini muffin tins. And by prepared, I mean very, very generously brushed with butter. Right, not just a little butter. Right, we want to be dripping in at least about a half a teaspoon for each one. And also, we want to make sure we're brushing along the sides as well. And yes, as you may have noticed, we have these placed over a sheet pan, which makes them easier to get in and out of the oven, but also helps diffuse and even out the heat. And that's it, once we have those pans buttered profoundly, We'll go ahead and start transferring in our potato mixture. And as we do this, we want to make sure we're grabbing the mixture from the bottom of the bowl. And that's because the salt we added is going to draw out moisture. And if we start filling these by grabbing mixture from the top, the last ones we do will be a lot wetter than the first ones. So I need you to get right down in there and get in there deep. And if everything goes according to plan, two large russets should make enough to fill up 24 of these cups to about a half inch above the top of the pan. And then once we have our mixture transferred in, what we'll do is go around and clean these up. And by the way, this same technique will work in regular sized muffin pans. And I'm only using these so I can call them potato pancake poppers. But if you want them bigger, make them bigger. I mean, you are after all the Patty Smith of your Patty with. But if you are gonna use a regular size muffin tin, I would only fill them maybe halfway up. Otherwise the inside might not cook all the way through by the time the exterior is done. And that's it, once our pans have been successfully filled, they are ready to transfer into the center of a nice hot 450 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes or until they look like this, which is a gorgeous golden brown on top 
in a beautifully brown caramelized crusty bottom. Okay, so the tops look good, but we'll have to flip one of these over to check the bottom, but not yet. Okay, we want to let these sit and cool for five minutes before we do, so they have time to contract a little bit, which will also make them unstick from the bottom. So we'll let those sit for a little bit before we turn one over and check it out. And oh yeah, that looks like we nailed it. And since that one's perfect, we can go ahead and flip these over, and we will assume every other one is just as beautiful, except a few of them weren't. So at this point I was faced with a big decision. I could just keep moving and pretend it didn't matter and serve them as is. Or because we never want to let the food win, I could take the ones that were a little lighter and pop them back into the tin and back into the oven and simply give them another five or 10 minutes until they were as beautifully brown and as magnificently crustified as the other ones. Which is what I did and I'm glad since these really should be cooked until the bottoms and outside edges are crispy. And then there are two main ways you can serve these. And the first way is to serve them up with that flat brown side down and that rougher, gnarlier, golden brown side up, which is perfect for when we're gonna use these as a base for a topping. For example, the classic combination of sour cream and chive. And by the way, when you serve them like this, some people call them bird's nests, and you can just place your fixings on top like I'm doing, or you can make a little depression in the top with the tip of your finger, and then spoon things in like caviar, or loaded baked potato fixings, or even something like a gorgeous Indian chutney. Oh yeah, you know that spicy Serrano cilantro one? That would be good. And what I love so much about the size and shape of these, besides of course they're just beautiful to look at, is that when you make them this size and bake them in that nice hot oven, the exterior gets beautifully crispy and crustified, but the inside stays a little bit moist and tender, and sort of kind of chewy, which is not generally an adjective we use with potatoes, but here it sort of fits. All right, so that's method one for our crispy potato pancake poppers. And then the other method would just be to simply serve these on a platter with the dark flat side up with some kind of amazing dip, like this nice garlicky pesto aioli. And that really was amazing on every level. Except speaking of levels, I completely forgot all my food blogger training that requires me to stack these up. So I stopped and did just that. And then I took a few new and improved pictures and continued eating. And above and beyond using these tasty snacks as a base for some topping, or to simply eat with a dip like I'm doing here, these also make for truly fantastic breakfast potatoes. Oh yeah, picture a nice pile of these next to a few strips of bacon and a couple over easy eggs. Now that would be something special. Or served as a potato side dish where you'd usually do fries or tater tots, since these are pretty much the same thing, only better. But no matter what you serve these on, or in, or under, or next to, I really do hope you give them a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.